Yo, what up, slackers? Dragon Ball episode number eight here. Uh, today's episode has accompanied some big words, vocabs, idioms. The first one is facade. Facade means it's a it's a cool exotic word. Like the C is not actually a C. It's like a squiggly C. I don't know if this is from French or is it from like some kind of cool language like Turkish or Greek. Anyway, the C is squiggly, and uh, yeah, facade just means someone's putting up a face, like a fake appearance. Not just someone, but like a fake appearance. Um, you know, underneath the facade, there's something uh, more real to the core. The facade is how things look on the surface. Number two, entourage. This one's easy. It's like groupie. If you think of, there, there was that TV show, Entourage. I've never seen it, but um, it just means a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of people following their, like, idol. That's that's really what the definition of a groupie is. Um, yeah, but in, in, in any case, it's just a group of followings. Uh, I mean, group of people following someone. Um, yeah, kind of like ardent fans to, uh, to a pop star or something. Um, the third one is, don't mind me. Don't mind me is just, this is just a phrase when, that you say when, uh, you feel like you're causing trouble to someone and you're kind of like apologizing and then just treat you as though, uh, you didn't appear or you didn't exist. Kind of like, please pretend I'm not here. Don't mind me. Um, you're kind of at an inconvenient place and, uh, yeah, just, you're just trying to excuse yourself. And then the last one is a hair short of total chaos. I mean, the, here the total chaos is replaceable with any other um, object. It just means from, if it's a hair short of total chaos, it means it's on the brink of turning into total chaos, but it's just mm, that, it's just not, 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 it's not chaos, but it's, getting there is dangerous. So, um, yeah, kind of like right now where the, the, the state of the United States is just a hair short of total chaos with uh, what whatever Trump is uh, uh, kind of like doing in the White House and how the Congress is trying to impeach him for the second time. Yeah, only a hair short of total chaos. I'm going to try to um, use these vocabs uh, somewhere along the story. If I can, and uh, here we go. Episode number eight of Dragon Ball. In episode number seven, um, we stopped at where Goku, Boma, and Oolong have um, basically <laughs> um, trespassed this territory called Fire Mountain, which is inhabited by this big, uh, crazy monster dude. Uh, his name is the Ox King, and um, he, uh, yeah, he basically uh, told Goku, when he was fighting Goku, he told Goku that um, he should, uh, if he wants the Dragon Ball, he needs to go find Chi-Chi, who is uh, the Ox King's daughter, because Chi-Chi went to uh, Master Roshi's house um, to get the Bencho fan, which can put out the fire in the Fire Mountain. It's funny how if the Fire Mountain no longer has fire, then it probably shouldn't be called the Fire Mountain anymore. But that's why um, Goku uh, basically went to uh, went to chase after Chi Chi to uh, to and and also to try to retrieve the Bencho fan together with her. Um, at the same time, Puar and um, Yamcha, they were both following, kind of like sneaking up on, um, on the, on the, here, there we go, on, um, not the groupie, but let me, let me use entourage somewhere else. Um, they, they were sneaking up on the group and, uh, kind of like witnessing all of this, yet not making themselves seen. So, um, yeah, so now we are on to episode number eight, and... Goku and Chi Chi, they make it to the Kame house where Master Roshi lives. This is on that little island. And 
Chi-Chi didn't believe Master Roshi for who he is, because this is, she just saw this old man, um, with, like, a turtle shell on his back, and he's, like, and it just looks real, real weak, and kind of like, a, kind of like, a yeah, he doesn't look like a Kung Fu master. So Chi-Chi threw the axe from her helmet at him, and uh, Master Roshi sensed it coming, and he tried to dodge, but he actually couldn't get out of the way fast enough. So the axe lodged onto his forehead, and uh, and then <laughs> he uh, he 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 showed Chi-Chi his Hermit Club card because another name for Master Roshi is Turtle Hermit. So he he pulls out his club card as a proof that he is a turtle hermit. Chi Chi apologizes and then pulls out the axe or the the blade from her helmet out from Master Roshi's forehead. Um, that was quite hilarious. Master Roshi then told Goku that um, if he wants to use the Bencho fan, then Goku needs to set him up for a date with Boma. Uh, you know, Goku is. Of course, Goku would be okay with it, so Goku agrees, and then the master told told Goku, don't mention this to anyone else. And uh, then he went in to search the ben search for the Bencho fan. However, his turtle told him that the, the last time the Bencho fan was seen, it was used as a floor mat. Um, then Master Roshi recalls that um, he threw out, he had thrown, thrown out the mat because it was sticky, uh, because he spilled some juice on it in the past. And then, you know, seems like all hope is lost, but no, Master Roshi just told Goku, um, and Chi Chi that he'd rather go to the fire mountain himself to put out the fire. Um, that was pretty cool, because we didn't know that Master Roshi can also cameo as a fire extinguisher, or a fireman, a part-time fireman. Um, so, Master Roshi then calls in his ride. This is something called a baby chimera. Chimera. <laughs> a baby gamera. Um, <laughs> I almost pulled a chimera there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, you know, something for the Saints fans out there. Um, not Baby Chimera, but Baby Gamera. So, yeah, then, um, then Goku and, uh, and, uh, Chi-Chi were, were riding the Flying Nimbus, whereas Master Roshi was taking the Baby Gamera, and, uh, they were on their way to the Fire Mountain. Once they got there, the Ox King was so thrilled to see his old master. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Master Roshi was the old master of the Ox King. And, uh... Yeah, and then Master Roshi falls to the ground because the his ride, the baby Gamera. Oh, by the way, the baby Gamera is actually a flying turtle. Um, that was just big enough for Master Roshi to sit on it. While it while it flies, it needs to spin. It spins like crazy so fast that Master Roshi was like he it made him dizzy once he got off. And um, after you know after he got there, he started like accusing the Ox King and basically telling him that he's been an ass all along for killing people uh, over his treasure and his castle and the Fire Mountain. And the big dude um, almost begged Master Roshi for his forgiveness. And I guess he was forgiven. And then Master Roshi, of course, asking Goku to f fulfill his uh, promise, uh, and uh, he asked Bulma, or Goku needed to ask Bulma that he made a deal with Master Roshi that she must go on a date with him for him to put out the fire. Bulma, at first, she was very offended, and uh, but then uh, Master Roshi correct correctly pointed out to her, actually, you know what? It's important for her to put out the fire, or for him to put out the fire for her because. All the Dragon Balls that she had collected are still inside the castle when they first were when they first had gone into uh, uh, the castle of the Ox King. That's inside the that's in the Fire Mountain. So they kind of have no choice, or Bulma had no choice. So then she agreed to go on a date with Master Roshi if if he can put out the fire. Then here goes one of the most classic scenes 
of um of the first Dragon Ball series. So Master uh, Roshi, he kind of like pulls up against uh, he he gets on top of a, a wall, um, pulls off his shirt, takes off his shell, the the giant turtle shell, and and then like this skinny little little old man suddenly was able to bulk up his muscle like he's a WWE wrestler. Kind of like he's been on steroids for steroids for years or something. And he just like, he basically just bulked up kind of like the Hulk um, in a split of a second. And then, um, and then he, uh, using this kind of transformed body, he was harnessing his energy. He pulled, so like, um, yeah, actually, this was all being explained, um, uh, by Yamcha, who was, uh, kind of sneaking up on the group, uh, from behind a wall, or behind a rock or something. Him and Puar has been spying on these guys all along, and he, he thought this kind of, this kind of skill, you know, summoning up energy was something of a, of a legend, but... He, he's able to see it, to witness it in person. And he was absolutely amazed. And so was the entire group. Goku, Oolong, Boma, um, the Ox King, as well as Chi-Chi. All here. So they all instantly became um, the, uh, the, 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 the Grand Master, Master Roshi's entourage. Yeah, so they, uh, they became, instantly became his fan because the old man was able to bulk himself up, conjuring energy, and then sends out a giant wave uttering the phrase, Kamehameha. So that's the Kamehameha wave, which is actually the title of this uh, episode. And it was really amazing how he releases the energy and sends it toward the uh, direction of the fire mountain. Um, in an instant, the fire was put out. And uh, just just as uh, Master Roshi was kind of like exhausted, he was pretty shot after uh, conjuring up all that energy and he's back to his old scrawny form. But then uh, he was like asking everyone, so how did I do? And uh, yeah, uh, people were kind of hesitant to mention that although the fire was put out with the mountain, um, but actually the entire mountain as well as the castle in the mountain was destroyed as well. Uh, yeah, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of was a bummer. Although, uh, what Master Roshi did was absolutely impressive to the group. So, uh, yeah, as a, you know, as a silver lining to it, Bulma was actually able to find the Dragon Ball in the rubbles of the castle. And here I can use another phrase, um, which is, Master Roshi was just a hair short of destroying all the Dragon Balls, but luckily, Bulma was able to retrieve all the Dragon Balls from the rubbles of the Kamehameha wave. Um, yeah, and, and here I can also use the, the, the word facade. So I guess the little scrawny man is only a facade for Master Roshi, because deep down inside, he can bulk himself up like a true fighter, like the biggest mus muscular male in the world, and be be able to wield a very powerful technique called the Kamehameha, the Kamehameha wave. So all of that is under the facade of a weak and funny little guy. Um, yeah. Then, uh, after Bulma retrieved the Dragon Balls, Master Roshi told Goku, um, uh, that, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So he tells Goku, uh, so Goku asks, um, Master Roshi, can he also learn the Kamehameha wave? But Master Roshi told him, yeah, it took him 50 years to learn it and perfect the technique. However, Goku wanted to try it for himself, so he was able to conjure a smaller, a much smaller version of the wave within like 50 seconds of uh, seeing it happening. And uh, with the wave, 
he he directed the little wave toward the the car, the capsule car that um that yeah that um whose capsule car was this? Oh, that was the one that was given to them by Yamcha and Puar. Yamcha and Puar. So yeah, now their car, their their vehicle was destroyed. However. You know, this was absolutely amazing because everybody saw that. The Ox King and um, Master Roshi, they both saw Goku was able to conjure a Kamehameha wave within a minute of seeing it happening. So, yeah, they were dumbfounded, but at the same time, uh, the Ox King told uh, uh, Master Roshi that Goku is the grandson of Grandpa Gohan. Then... Master Roshi thought, okay, then that makes sense because I guess he was uh, he was also Master. I mean, he was also Grandpa Gohan's pal, and I I I I guess he believes that Gohan has been training Goku all along. Therefore, it would be no surprise that Goku already have seen the Kamehameha wave being done. Um, and then when Bulma shows up and sees the car destroyed, she was pissed at Goku, but the Ox King saves the day by offering them a hover car, I guess a car that can uh, suspend in the air for putting out the fire and to reward Goku and Bulma for uh, for their help. And then, um, just before um, Goku, Bulma, and Wulong would ride off and, um, oh yeah, I guess they also got the Dragon Ball as a as a gift from the uh, from the Fire Mountain and from the Ox King. But just before they were able to take off, Master Roshi f- did uh, send a friendly reminder to Bulma that they had a deal and they needed to go on a date. So Bulma cleverly pulls Oolong aside and asks him, "Hey, why don't you transform into me so you can go on a date with Roshi?" Because she was very much disgusted with the old man. Um, yeah. At first, Oolong, um, yeah, Oolong said, no, oh, hell no, how, how can I do that? But then Bulma reminded him that he's gonna, he's gonna, um, make some piggy sound, and then he has to go, then uh, Oolong has to go pee to, to, uh, because Bulma previously fed Oolong a pill that every time she makes it, somebody makes a piggy sound, he has to go pee. So Wulong's like, all right, all right then. So he changes into a, a chubby version of Bulma, which is quite funny. And Bulma went berserk. She's like, am I that ugly? And then Wulong um, then transforms back to the, uh, the, the a version that is identical to Bulma. And then he calls Master Roshi over and says, hey, come here. And, uh... Um, Master Roshi, in, in his mind, he was going to go on a walk with Bulma, so he happily obliged. But the Oolong version of Bulma, um, uh, of Oolong, of course, he didn't care. So he's like, hey, Master Roshi. And then he pulls down his bra and, and flashes Master Roshi with his boobs. Uh, or with Bulma's boobs, rather. Because Oolong, Oolong didn't care. It wasn't his anyway. So, um, uh, and Master Roshi was pleasantly surprised, shall we say. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's say here. And his, uh, yeah, the blood basically, like, squirted out of his nose at the scene of Bulma's bust. So, it was, it was quite funny. It's almost like him standing there, like, don't mind me. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a perfect place to use it, but he's like, as, as Oolong was, uh, Pulling down his bra, he was, uh, he's like, this, at this exhilarating, exhilarating scene, he was speechless, and he's like, yeah, don't mind me, please. This is much more than what he had argued, or more, more, what he had uh, asked for, and uh, he was more than happy uh, for what he got. And uh, that was the, uh, that was the end of the day. And, um... Then Bulma saw that from a distance, and she was absolutely, um, yeah, she was absolutely pissed at Oolong for what, she, what he did. But, of course, Oolong didn't care. <laughs> that wasn't part of the deal. Um, yeah, and then 
at the end of the story, or at the end of the episode, Goku and Chi Chi, they were, that was really cute. They were talking to each other. They were asking each other, are you gonna be thinking of me when we part? Um, yeah, th this is, this is really cool. And, uh, Chi Chi asked Goku, um, will you, will you take me for my wife? And Goku said, yeah, of course. Um, of course, as long as she wants him to, then he's he's gladly happy to do whatever she says. And I, the problem here is that Goku did not understand what he was getting himself into. He did not know what he has just promised Chi Chi. He did not know what marriage is, and uh, he's like, yeah, hell yeah, if uh, if if uh, whatever marriage means, sure, of course, I will take you for my bride. And then that was the end of that, and he thought, yeah, that that all he needed was just to say yes, and then he could be well on their way. Um, again, all this entire time, they've got Yancha and uh, Puar um, on their back, following them now in the in the new hover car. And that's the end of episode number eight. Have we covered all the vocabs of today? Facade, entourage, don't mind me, and a hair short of. Yeah, I think we've covered all of it, and yeah, see, the better usage of don't mind me is like, yeah, don't mind me, my uh, my style of d and delivery of this story has been uh, terrible all along and th throughout this entire series, so don't mind me, please. Just enjoy this story if you can, okay? And that's it, and uh, I will see you next time.